Now when it comes to getting a degree in college, figuring out how much that would actually cost will depend on many different factors such as where you live, your financial situation, what college you'll be going to, if you'll be going to a community college or a four-year in-state college, any other uh, course fees for that particular degree or for that particular field. Also the commute there and housing and books and all of those things factor in into how much you would actually have to pay for your engineering degree. So I thought I'd make this video and share some information about how much I paid for my degree and what all the costs were and where they came from so that hopefully it'll give you some insights as to how much you should probably expect to pay depending on you know similar circumstances that I was in when I graduated. So let's get started. For my freshman year, I went to ASU, and at the time, this was 2015, so that cost about $15,000 a semester. And that was with a scholarship that I had received from Intel for having a high GPA in high school. I ended up getting paid, I think, 10 grand for the year. So it would have been 40 grand instead of 30. That helped a little bit, but not nearly enough as what the actual cost was because it was very expensive. It was a requirement at ASU that if you're a freshman for you to live there for the first year. I was part of the Barrett's Honor College. The rooms were a lot nicer, but at the same time, it costs more per semester. So at the very end of the day, I don't know if it was actually worth it. Um, the only upside to it was the, the meal plan. It was an unlimited meal plan and I think that was maybe $300 a semester I, I can't quite remember but you were able to go and have as much as you want whenever you wanted throughout the day there were other types of meal plans where you can only go twice a day or once a day you know the, the less you go the cheaper it was and at the cafeteria there's a variety of options that you could choose from having that meal plan was actually really nice because at the end of the day I didn't really have to spend any money on actual groceries um, except for the occasional maybe yogurts or protein bars, something really quick and easy to eat. Um, but most of the time I would stop by that cafeteria and grab fruit, vegetables, and have my breakfast, lunch, dinner there. And then after my freshman year, I went back home and I went to my in-state college, which was UNM. That was significantly cheaper. Uh, per semester, it was, uh, I think, about $3,900 a semester. That didn't include any sort of room and board or meal plan or anything. That was just the flat tuition rate, which wasn't a very big issue because I ended up living at home until I did graduate. So the room and board was technically zero and there was no rent that I had to pay. So that was also zero. Um, and the food, I did have to pay every now and then, but at the same time, I had just gotten my um, internship at the place I'm working at now. So I was able to afford the groceries that I was paying for, um, which ended up being, I think, $400 a semester. And then the books for each of the years probably averaged to about $150 or $200 for all three years. And this is mainly because during my sophomore and senior year, my professors used books that were available online and you could download you know, through a PDF. You could just download a PDF file of it and use that. So I really didn't have to pay for any books my senior year and I mainly had to pay like maybe two or three books for my sophomore and then one book for my junior year. And then after that there was um, the cost to drive from my home to the university which is about a 25 to 30 minute commute without traffic. However I did have a car that was um, very good on gas so I only had to fill up every month and a half or so and that ended up being about $300 a semester. And for parking, I had to pay a dollar for every half hour I was there, and I added all that up, and it ended up being about $150 a semester. Um, now, there were a lot of days where I just was able to park, and by the time my class finished, because it was only a 50 minute class, I would immediately come back before anyone could actually see if I had you know, paid for my parking spot. Um, so I, a lot of the times I was able to get away without actually having to pay for parking. But I wouldn't really recommend that because there were a couple of times where they did find my car and they did um, cite me for that and I did have to pay like 40 bucks. So that's not fun. Um, but 
majority of the time they didn't see me and I was able to get away without having to pay anything. But yeah, those are all the costs I had for sophomore year all the way until graduation. And then for my master's degree, I only went for an additional year, one year, and the tuition there was $8,000 for that year. And everything else was basically the same. Um, I still lived at home and the amount of food that I spent, the grocery, the parking, everything was about the same. So instead of going for three years, I technically went for four and I got that's how I got my master's degree. In total, this is how much my bachelor's degree costs and then my master's degree. So this is a pretty good ballpark number on what to expect if you are thinking about majoring in engineering, whether it be a bachelor's or a master's degree. Now, a couple of things that I would like to really point out and stress is that my parents were able to pay for that first year at ASU, so that was a huge, huge help on their part. Um, they covered all the tuition costs, all of the you know, room and board, the meal plans, everything like that, they, they covered that. So I'm very thankful for that. And it's something that I would, I'd really like to point out because if you're thinking, oh, maybe she probably took out um, a loan for that because how could she have gotten $30,000? No, um, I did do that. And if you're thinking about you know going out of state, I would, I would not do it. I don't think it's worth it at all. Uh, the education ver at ASU versus UNM was pretty much the same. There was really no difference. Um, in fact, I think maybe the um, education and learning at UNM was better because the classes were smaller. There weren't as many people than ASU. So the professors gave their undivided attention to the students. Um, but again, that's just the engineering field. I don't know about the other fields. Um, so that's one thing I'd like to stress. Um, the other thing is that I was living at home. So I didn't take into consideration the cost of rent because I didn't really have to pay any rent. Um, so that's another thing that I would like to just put out there that you need to also consider rent. Rent is a huge uh, chunk of the cost. Uh, depending on where you live, it could be a lot higher or a lot lower. Um, but it's a huge factor in determining like how much the actual degree would cost. And then the last one that I would like to stress is the commute. So I lived 30 minutes away from UNM versus ASU where I lived on campus. And that cost of having to drive to and from UNM almost every day was very significant. And it's something that I think you should definitely you know consider when you're getting your engineering degree is where are you going to live? Are you going to live really close to the university or far away, 30 minutes away like I did? Um, because that'll, of course, increase costs in terms of uh, the amount of gas and um, how much you're driving your car. You might have to take it for more repairs or more checkups, who knows? Uh, so that's just another one that I think you should definitely um, think about. If you decide to major in engineering and you wanna know how much that would cost, um, so yeah, those are the three main things that I would just be wary of and, you know, take your own guesstimate on that area. So yeah, this is basically the end of the video. I hope it didn't, you know, drag on too long. I just wanted to go over what exactly I paid for my bachelor's degree and then my master's degree. Um, hopefully it gave you guys some insight and some information on what to expect and how much you might be paying for your engineering degree. Um, but some things that'll help reduce the cost is go in state, um, get a scholarship, uh, get an internship to help you pay for your tuition or for your books, whatever it is. Um, and also maybe find a part-time job if you're struggling to pay for the next semester. Um, just avoid any sort of loans. But yeah, I hope you guys liked this video. And if you did, please let me know in the comment section down below. And if you'd like me to make any other similar videos, then also let me know. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys like this video and thank you for watching. Bye.